Today we will start unit three, which is on passive circuit elements, including inductors and capacitors. At the conclusion of today's lecture, a student should be able to briefly and clearly explain capacitance and inductance, and be able to write the formulas for voltage, current, power, and energy for inductors and capacitors, and be able to identify inductors and capacitors in an electric circuit, and to analyze a circuit under DC conditions that includes inductors and capacitors and be able to sketch voltage, current, power, or energy for an inductor or capacitor. An inductor is an electrical component that opposes any change in electric energy. It is composed of a coil of wire wound around a supporting core whose material may be magnetic or non-magnetic. The source of the magnetic field is charge in motion or current. This current flowing through this core creates a voltage and this induced voltage is related to the current by using the equation V equals L D I D T. The important thing to remember that students sometimes forget is once we introduce inductors and capacitors into a circuit, there's no longer a linear relationship between voltage and current. There's actually a derivative. So if we look at these three elements here, these are three examples of an inductor. It's a coil of wire wound around some type of core, and when current flows through that core, it induces a voltage. This circuit element on the right will be the one that we use in class to describe an inductor. Note that energy stored in an inductor can be used to release and fire a spark plug. For this formula, V equals L D I D T, L is the inductance in Henry's and I is the current in amperes and T is the time in seconds. If you want to find the current through an inductor, you take the integral of this equation, which yields I equals one over L, the integral from T naught to T, V D T plus I of T naught, and that's the units in amps. Note that we now have an initial condition. Unlike resistors, inductors and capacitors can store energy. Inductors store energy in the form of current, which is how you can have an initial current, and capacitors store energy in the form of voltage. To find the power in inductor, we use the formula P equals L I D I D T, and this is derived from P equals V times I, or the energy is 0.5 L I squared, and that is derived from the energy equal to the integral from zero to T P D T. There are three key assumptions that we make about inductors. The first one is that an inductor is a short circuit to a constant voltage or under DC conditions, okay? The way we show a short circuit is a wire which has zero volts across it. Why is this true? Well, if V is equal to L di dt and I is equal to a constant value, then the voltage would be zero volts. The current through an inductor cannot change abruptly. Another way of stating that is the current through an inductor is continuous of all time for all time. And the voltage across an inductor can change instantaneously when the inductor changes from storing to discharging energy or vice versa. Now let's try an example. For the following circuit, find the current through and voltage across the inductor. Notice that we have a 0.25 Henry inductor and we wanna find the voltage IL, VL, and the current IL. Since this is a constant current, we know that we can now model this circuit under DC conditions. Under DC conditions, I can redraw this with the inductor represented as a short circuit. And then up here, I have a two ohm resistor. Right here, I have a four ohm resistor. And over here, I still have the five amp current source. The first thing you should notice is that the two ohm resistor is shorted out. The two ohm resistor is shorted out because it's in parallel with a wire, which means the ends are tied together. The voltage across the inductor, because it's a short circuit, would be VL. The current through the inductor would be five amps because current follows the path of least resistance and the two ohm resistor is not there. So for this example, VL is zero volts and IL is five amps. So now let's introduce a capacitor. A capacitor is an electric component that consists of two conductors separated by an insulator or dielectric material. The capacitor is the only device other than a battery that can store electric charge. 
It stores energy in the form of voltage. A time-varying electric field produces a displacement in current in space occupied by the dielectric. So capacitance relates the displacement of current to the voltage. It's also a differential relationship. Energy can be stored in a capacitor and then released to fire a flash bulb. Here are several examples of ceramic and electrolytic capacitors, as well as a representation of the plates with the charge on it. The circuit symbol that we will use in our class for a capacitor is the one on the right, where the current through it is I, the voltage across it is V, and C represents the capacitance measured in farads. The formula that relates current and voltage for a capacitor is I is equal to C dV dt. If you want to solve for the voltage, the voltage would be 1 over C, the integral from T naught to T, I dt plus V of T naught. Remember, capacitors store energy in the form of voltage, so V of T naught represents the initial voltage across the capacitor. The power relationship for a capacitor is CV dV dt, and that's found by multiplying V times I, and the energy is 1 half CV squared, and that can be found by integrating the power. There are three key assumptions or properties that we have for a capacitor. The first one is that a capacitor is an open circuit to a constant voltage or under DC conditions. So this would be shown with an open circuit that has a current of zero amps. Why is this true? Well, if I is equal to C dV dt, and the voltage is a constant value such as K, then the derivative of a constant is zero, so the current would be zero amps. The second property is that the voltage on a capacitor cannot change abruptly. It's continuous for all time. However, the current through a capacitor can change instantaneously based upon whether the element is storing or discharging energy or vice versa. So now let's do an example of analyzing a circuit with a capacitor under DC conditions. Here we have a 12 volt source, a five ohm resistor in series with a one ferret capacitor and that quantity in parallel with a four ohm resistor. So if we have DC conditions, the first thing I'm going to do is to redraw that circuit and draw the capacitor as an open circuit. So here's the 12 volts, the five ohms, the open circuit for the capacitor and the four ohm resistor. And what we're looking for is the voltage across the capacitor and the current through the capacitor. The first thing you should notice is that the 5 ohm resistor has no current flow, which means it has no voltage drop. So it's like the 5 ohm resistor is not there. So because we have DC conditions, the current through the capacitor is 0 amps. And the voltage across the capacitor is the same as the voltage source, which is 12 volts. Now let's try a couple of concept questions. The voltage across a one ferret capacitor is shown in the following figure. Which of the following figures is a graph of the current? First, let's find the relationship between current and voltage again. So I is equal to C dV dt. So the capacitance is one ferret, but the current should be the derivative of the voltage. Recall that when we have a waveform, the derivative of the voltage is the same as the slope of the tangent line. So if we can find the figure that looks most like the slope of our voltage waveform, that would be the answer. We have a positive slope, a negative slope, and a positive slope. So the only one of these waveforms that has a positive and a negative and a positive slope is the first one. The second one appears to go to a different slope, and since these slopes appear to be the same, it can't be that one. And this one, there's not the slope, it's actually just a copy of the original figure, so it can't be that one. So the answer would have to be letter A. So what about if we're given the current and we want to find the voltage for a capacitor? Let's look at concept question two. An initially uncharged one millifarad capacitor has current shown in the following figure. Calculate the voltage across the capacitor at t equal two milliseconds and t equal five milliseconds. The relationship is V is equal to 1 over C, the integral from 0 to T, I d tau plus V of 0. Since this is an initially uncharged capacitor, V of 0 is 
zero. So if I want the voltage at two milliseconds, I can either find the equation of these lines and integrate, or remember that integral is the same as area under the curve. So this would be one over one milli times the area of that triangle, which is one half times two milli times 100 milli, which is equal to, which is equal to 100 millivolts. So now we'll find the voltage at five milliseconds. And to do this, we're going to need to find the integral between two and five milliseconds. So this is going to be one over one milli times three milli times 100 milli. Plus you have to add on the initial voltage at two milliseconds, which was 100 millivolts, which equals 400 millivolts. This concludes our introduction to inductors and capacitors.